got it. Okay. Fantastic, got it. Pete. So we're here with Pete B from Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I'm really excited to talk to Pete who's actually aware of the series of interviews we've been doing on any history. So it's great that you've seen a couple of them, Pete, and you're, you've, you've given us time today um, because you were at the sharp end of the basic text and it's coming together. And, and, and I think a lot of us who are kind of newish love to hear about the mechanics and, and how it actually worked and, and you got it all together. Actually, we should give a big shout out to Camilla and our loving our long timers for, for setting this up. Yeah. She's fantastic. Yeah. Um, just, we were just talking earlier there. So you, you, you said you've been involved in writing literature or being part of literature committees right from the minute that you got clean and came to any. Just about, I, I, first, uh, I first showed up in February of 1980 and I had this guy this guy who, who found me in an AA clubhouse and told me about NA, I'd never heard of it before. Well, my first few weeks, this guy took me around to meetings all over the greater Philadelphia area. Like we'd drive an hour and a half, two hours. And, and I was all fired up about NA and um, I'd never heard of it before. You know, I've been, I've been, I'd spent two and a half years. I thought I was like sober, you know, but and I, well, I wasn't drinking, but um, I'd never heard of total abstinence or anything. Uh, and then this kid uh, found me in an AA clubhouse and he told me about NA. So uh, Steve, th his name was Steve Kasky. He's no longer with us. So I'll use his whole name. And, but he, he told me about NA and, um, and uh, he took me to meetings all over. And then I went up to tell my friends in Connecticut all about, uh, we, this is in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I, I drove four hours up to my, see my friends in Connecticut. And I was all excited to tell them all about this exciting new thing that I found. And, and the first thing I did when I got there was said, where's the drugs, you know? When I was there, when I was there, that's what I did. I was the party starter and um, it, it devastated me, completely devastated me. And I came back, George R was the guy who, he he actually uh, got me, he kept me from walking out of my first NA meeting. And, and if, if it wasn't for George, I never would have come back. But um, I walked back into that meeting and the miracle happened. And so when I came back from my relapse, you know, I went to George, I said, George, I don't, I can't trust myself. I don't know what to do. And George said, I don't know. I said, the people I see that, that stick are the ones who get involved. So I, you know, Saturday night meeting needed somebody to make coffee and I knew how to make coffee. And Sunday night meeting was a step meeting, which impressed the hell out of me. Um, you know, I'd never heard of such a thing. It was like actually studying the steps. They, I didn't hear that where I came from. And, and I, knew, I knew right then that these guys were taking this stuff seriously. And I needed people around me that took this seriously because I knew I had, a, I, I knew, I knew I was an addict, but I knew what that meant. And, what, um, what was the situation there with the step study? What were the what materials were being being used at the time? They would they would read from the AA twelve and twelve, and they yeah. had the, all the books had had all the you know they had they had made the AA literature NA literature. We yeah. they, they, they scoring they had, ones out. They had over cross out and put clean. They had sobriety put put out and put clean time. Yeah. Uh, you know alcohol uh, crossed out and put addiction. And, you know, and we wrote through it, but we would read through, uh, we'd read through a paragraph at a time and then go around the room and everybody would, would share their experience, what that meant to them, what it meant to them. And, uh, and, and to me, I loved that meeting. And uh, George came back, George was the group's GSR. He came back from the, uh, I think there was, it was in our area regional meeting, but he had talked to Bob P from Pittsburgh who was the, he was the world, he was the chair of the world PI committee at the time. And, and, you know, he came back with, you know, they had, they had decided, you know, NA had for 27 years, NA had been using AA literature, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and that in the mid seventies, they realized that's a problem, you know, it's a problem because people were, were coming to NA to get clean and then going there to get recovery. And then half of them, most of them didn't come back. And a lot of addicts could not, a lot of addicts couldn't couldn't get it from that literature. What was it? Was it a pure question of identification? What were the so? Were, were, yeah, big, yeah. And, and you know the the something that's become increasingly uh, critical to, to me, and and I've I've only realized more and more how critical that therapeutic value of one addict helping another. There's something um, there's something that runs way deeper with us and uh you know and and for an addict that's really an addict is really sick um it, that that identification is critical it's the same thing that, the same thing that 
may find out in the beginning for one alcoholic to another. And with yeah. addicts, it's just, we, we tend to need that, 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 that deeper connection. I'm interested in that concept because I don't think I've, anyone's put it to me quite that way before. You know, there, is there something about our rock bottoms or something about the way we live? Uh, is it something about the way addicts are kind of predisposed with heart and head that makes us need that deeper, deeper connection? I haven't yeah, heard it. Yeah. It, it, it's, um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's um, all I know is I've been going to AA for two and a half years mm. uh, and, and, you know, I just went to meetings and didn't drink and, and I lived my life and I didn't, I, I didn't know anything about, I saw steps on the wall and everything, but from the time I talked to that guy, Steve, in, in that 12 Keys clubhouse, and then, and then that very first meeting, it was like this, suddenly it was like this, this wall that I had around me just fell away. You know, okay. I was, I was so, I, I was doing really well in my life. I, you know, you know, after I'd had a, I'd had a terrible bottom after, after getting out of the Navy in 77, mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, I had stopped doing everything and I, I was suicidal for, uh, for like three or four months. I wasn't doing anything, but I just wanted to, every, every single day, my goal for that day was to kill myself. And every night when it hadn't happened, it was that day was a failure. So that was the state I was in two and a half years before. You know, I, I don't, if, if I could have found NA then, I don't know. But I, maybe I wouldn't have been ready. But, uh, you know, I've, you, I've come. Sorry, Pete, I just wanted, do you feel that you, um, so we'll circle back, but with everything that happened, do you, how, do you, how do you look on the fact that you came in just at the time? when this literature movement was beginning or that you were able to be part of a group who really wanted this stuff. I've been, that to me, that's, you know, when I, when I do these kind of, when I'm talking about the history and everything, there's many times I, I, I think, did that really happen? Was that, was I really a part of that? Cause I, you know, I don't see myself that way, you know, I'm, I'm just another addict, right? I got, I got really lucky to show up when I did. Um, you know, I, I remember thinking, coming back from that relapse, I remember thinking, uh, I'll never have friends like that again, because I knew I couldn't go around those old friends I had anymore. And and we had, we'd been through a lot together. We'd lost our closest, our, you know, my, my closest friend, and he was supposed to get married in a few weeks, so his fiance lost him, and he had Hodgkin's disease, and, and he got pneumonia, and it killed him. And it was right after he'd brought me back from an out-of-body uh, you know, I had an, an overdose and I was, I was on my way out and this, this guy brought me back and then he, he died five days later. And I, I just was like, um, you know, I, 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 that, that experience helped me, I think more than I, the more than I knew at the time, but, um, you know, I, uh, I, I can't remember why I started talking about that, but well, we, we Maybe if we if we're moving into the kind of so you're you found recovery you've got a great group of people around you've got George who we'll hear more about I was speaking oh, about oh yeah, yeah, today. yeah hopefully George, we'll get George, George. The one had three yeah. years clean like he I didn't know when he first he reached out to me I'm getting ready to leave my first meeting because like all I see is a room full of teenagers and they're they're acting like teenagers they're yeah. fucking nuts and, <laughs> and I'm 25 I was I felt like a very old 25 I was used to being the young punk in the room yeah and now all of a sudden I'm the old guy and I feel like the old guy and I'm like what am I doing here and I'm like there's no way what how could these kids possibly help me and I didn't even know I needed help right and and uh and and I'm I'm getting ready to leave when George kind of came out and just chatted me up it was on a break in the meeting and you know he was just so I, I didn't know what was going on at the time, but it was the same thing that happened when I talked to that guy, Steve, I felt a connection, I felt a connection. It was similar to the connection I'd felt to my friend who had died. And I, I'd had very few of those connections in my life, but that, that guy, I kind of did. And, 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 but he just told me, you know, he asked me if I was new and I was like, I was like, no, I've been, I've been sober for two and a half years. And, you know, I guess that was his first clue that maybe I'd never been to NA before, but, um, you know, he, he, he was very kind and, and he just kind of laughed and he said, he said, oh, he said, I said, well, um, is this your first time in an NA meeting? And I said, yeah, I never even heard of you guys. I said, I'm just checking it out. I said, but I don't know. And he, he's, he's like, well, we're about total abstinence. And, and he said that includes pot and, and alcohol and everything. And he said, uh, you know, any mind or mood altering substance, you know, and, and he said, but, um, you know, and the whole time he's not like lecturing at all. He's just like, He's, he's very, very, I'm just feeling this hand of friendship reaching out to me. And this guy was, he, he was very, um, 
you know, he just had this, he drew people to him, you know, he was just one of those kind of people. And, and I, and he's like, just turned 20, right? Three years clean, just turned 20. But I, I, I like the, the conversation got me to go back into the room. And on the way back in, this thought occurred to me that I'd heard somewhere that I stopped growing emotionally when I started using. And I started using when I was 14. So I, so I, I walked back into that meeting and that thought opened my mind. I said, well, okay, then emotionally I'm right here with these kids. So I'm right where I should be. And the second half of that meeting just blew me away. I'm, I'm like, every, everything, I'm not seeing a room full of teenagers. I'm seeing a room full of um, peers, you know? Because they're saying stuff like girls, you know, a 16 year old girl is sharing. And I'm like, yeah, me too. I'm thinking, yeah, me too. How did you people learn how to talk like this? You know, it was, I just felt an immediate connection. Okay. So was it, was it, do you think then what, what came later with the basic text was what was being captured? Yes. And that's what you tried to capture what was being. Well, that's, yeah. yeah. Well, for that group, that's exactly what happened because we, yeah. We, when when George came back from after talking to Bob P and Bob P gave him the news that um, that that using that step book was uh, was a violation of the sixth tradition, and now that nobody was saying you have to stop doing that because back then people respected group autonomy, sure. and and but but they they shared the information and so gr people went back to their groups and said hey we need to decide what we're going to do, hmm. and so. I'm back from my first, re my only relapse when, when they have that group conscience and I just became the group secretary. Mm -hmm. And now they, they start talking about violating the sixth tradition. And I knew what the traditions were, but I had no idea anything, anything about them. But they're, they're talking about this book and, and, and somebody said, well, well, what's NA literature then? You know, if we can only use NA literature, what's NA literature? And they said, well, the, we got the little white book and we got the pamphlet and we're like, this, that's not enough. And, 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 and then George piped in and said, well, I asked Bob P that question. And he said, any literature is anything written by addicts for addicts for the purposes of recovery. And this guy, I think it was this kid, Kenny, that said, um, well, why don't we write our own? And like the room, just everyone just, everyone just like sat with that for a minute. And I'm sitting there thinking, you can't be serious, you know. And then, and then, and then somebody else said, yeah, let's write our own. And then, and then the next thing you know, it's like, we're all gung ho about this. And we decided what we were going to do was um, uh, we we're going to have a meet in, at, at Phil and Kenny's apartment. And we were going to do what we did in that meeting. Only we weren't going to call it an official meeting. We we're going to read, read from the book and then go around the room and record the meetings. And everybody had to agree to be recorded. Yeah. And then, and then um, I was the group secretary. So I would take the recordings home transcribe the recordings and then I'd type them up because I had typing skills and I and I edited them into a format that we could use in the meeting because wow. we wanted to keep our step meeting going that was that was our whole motivation we weren't trying to write a book or anything we we're just trying to keep our step meeting going because we knew the answer was in the steps Did, so, what's, the, what's some of the material that you transcribed from those first meetings those first meetings would they did, did any of that directly end up in the basic text well every now and again i see a line you know <laughs> I, I, you got to understand the process was you know the yeah. the cut and paste process yeah very very few things when when somebody says yeah i i wrote that i question that i'm really i'm really interested though how do we join the dots here from your group and this is in bucks county right and 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 then you connecting with other groups and other members who feel the same way as as you do well when we started we started doing this and you know like i think we were meeting a few times a week because we got through by the uh, by by the first east coast convention which was right after i celebrated 90 days so that was in june of 1980 uh by then we had gone through all 12 steps and half of the traditions and and i had it was about 80 pages worth of material from all that, that I had transcribed and edited and typed up. And George still has some of this stuff too. He still has some of the original. I don't have anything. I, but the one thing I do have is. Oh, the typewriter. Oh, the typewriter that I used. Phenomenal. That's the typewriter that I used for four years typing any literature. That's an incredible thing. We got it. George and I had, uh, I'd found this house that we could rent both. Neither one of us could afford our apartments anymore. Cause I got fired from my job two years clean, 
two, two, two months clean, I got fired from the job I'd had. I had a really good job, but um, I got fired. So I, I, I couldn't afford my, I had that nice apartment. I couldn't afford that anymore. George couldn't afford his apartment. So we went in together on this house out in the country. It was kind of cheap. And when we moved in, there was a barn right beside the house. It was a farmhouse. And there was a barn that was almost adjacent to the house. And the, the land, the landlady said that we could, the, the, the previous tenants had left a bunch of stuff behind and she put it all in the barn and she said, take whatever you, you can use. And I found that typewriter in that barn. Really? Because yeah. it looks much, much older. That looks like it's from the 30s, maybe. Or I'm even. sure it was it was it was 30 or 40 years old then. You yeah. Because because I had to tune it up and everything. And, um, you know, and, you know, the 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 ribbons, there were times where I, I, I couldn't afford a replacement ribbon, but I had a lot of paper and I had a lot of carbon paper. So, so I was yeah, I would take two sheets of paper and put a piece of carbon in between them and type blind. So I had to be pretty, you know, I, I got pretty good at not making too many mistakes because it was a pain in the neck correcting them. Somebody said to me today, said, you know, the Pete Scott like can type 160 words a minute or something like that, or you could. But no, I, I, 75 words a minute. Was 75 right. words a minute it was, yeah. Which was fast enough for me. I mean, that, that was pretty good. But That's, um, so, so are you, so George and you become main drivers of this, this basic text project, but when are you connecting with the other guys from other parts of the U.S. who... Who first, East Coast, first East Coast Convention was when it all happened because we, we went there and um, we had already been on the phone to Bo a okay. little, just a little before yeah. that convention because that's that's somebody said I think it might have been Bob P told us to give give this guy Bo a call yeah I, mean, I think I think somehow or other we thought his name was Boo <laughs> and, and we, we're, it was funny we're in Kenny's apartment we're in Kenny and Phil's apartment and, and um, you know we, we decided, well, it, it was Kenny's apartment. So Kenny said, I'll dial the number. But he, he looked at George and said, you got the most clean time. So you can talk to the guy. You know? Everyone's we were, nervous. We were, yeah. used to, we were used to talking to people outside our little bubble there, you know. Sure. And, and this guy gets on and, and, and George, you know, told him what we were doing and said he heard that he, that he might be interested in it. And, and all of a sudden, it's like George holds the phone away from his ear and he says, he says I think this guy's some kind of a preacher or something. Because he's he's saying hallelujah, hallelujah. Because <laughs> here yeah, they, were, they were, they were down in Marietta, Georgia, 800 miles away from us. They yeah. were doing the same damn thing we were doing in Bucks County, PA. We didn't even know what each other were doing. Yeah, um, they were working on the basic text. We were working on the steps and the traditions. Mm. And you know, so um, so he asked he asked George if we were going to the first East Coast convention, and we said, well, we'll yeah, we'll we we'll, we'll plan to go there. So they came up. Uh, where was it, Pete? What's that? Where Where was it? The East Coast Convention. It was in I think in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. It was, it was at Bucknell uh, okay. University. Okay. Because East Coast conventions were always at, at colleges. Yeah. That's why they're they have them in at the end of June after the college semester is over. They and then we get the dorms and all that. But but we met we met these guys. Um, I think Greg P was there. Jim um, Jim Miller. Um, you know, Bo and a whole crew from Atlanta. Uh, Motorcycle Ed was, um, you know, I, I talking to that guy. I just had I just talking to him in a hallway do, over the course of I think it was on Saturday that weekend, and and I got this I got this whole vision just talking to this guy, of of that NA NA was for real and NA was going to be enough. You know, I didn't have to because up until then to do ninety and ninety, which I did about one hundred fifty and ninety, because I was sick. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I had to go to a whole bunch of AA meetings to, to, to make it up. And, and he explained to me how he, that's how what well, happened to him early in his recovery. And he got confused. He got confused going back and forth. Yeah. And I was very confused. I was still having daily obsessions up to that point. This is and, 90 um, days you are at this point, Pete. 90 I'm days. about 105 then. I had 90 days right before the convention. And yeah. but I was still having daily obsessions and everything. But I was all in. I mean, I was, I was in the no matter what club, you know. Yeah. George, George gave me the key to that club, and I, I never, I never even considered getting high after that. But, um, but, but just talking with, uh, with motorcycle Ed, it was just th th this guy. Just he had a way of uh, conveying the message that was just like it got you right, right where you live, right in your heart. Do you remember what he said to you at that event that really inspired you? Well, he, he just he told me his own experience. He shared his experience. He said that um, 
that he he had, he had started getting clean in AA and then then um, then he got to NA and then and then they they started up a clubhouse down there and they had meetings every day and he said never since then I've just gone I I just do NA and he says and he says and my confusion just fell away he says I I, I didn't have any more confusion and just the way he said it I, you could tell these these people had something they, I mean they had they they had some kind of a spiritual I didn't know what spiritual meant until I met these guys. And then, was it and then a belief was, system, do you think, Pete? Was it a, a faith of, you know? It was a head. fire in his eyes. Fire in his eyes, yeah. And, and, and a connection in my heart. That's all I can say. And wow. it, wasn't, it wasn't wasn't what he said. It was how he said it. Yeah. And, and I believed after that. And I, we came back, um, you know, when, when I said, you know, he was telling me about that. And, 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 and. He said, well, you know, it, it makes such a difference just to go to an NA meeting every day. And I, I said, but we can't. We don't have. And he said, well, start more meetings then. And, you know, <laughs> that made sense. So we, we came back and we just, um, you know, we were on fire when we came back. We started I, we started what I've, I've, I've since learned was it was the first midnight. I'm sorry, my, my computer okay. is crazy. I got to turn this off. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think it was the first uh, Friday midnight meeting on on the East Coast or something. But okay. yeah, we we started this up right. Or well, actually, these two addicts started it up, and then after the first couple of weeks, they they just kind of abandoned it. And and yeah. but but we kept it going. And that the the very first meeting, we figured it might be five or six addicts, and there were twenty five addicts showed up for the first meeting of this midnight meeting. That's when I first met Billy A. Because he came down from Allentown for that. Okay. Day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, Bill, yeah. and believe it or not, he was this real quiet kid that sat in the back of the room. He was oh, just that, taking people in. Yeah. He was very quiet. And, we had um, a really nice chat. I, I thought yeah. it was it was love. It was lovely to speak to him and get his perspective. Yeah. He he'd come down to our thing, and then and then George would go up to Allentown to help him out with a, he had a Saturday morning meeting going up there. So, you know, after this Friday midnight meeting, they, they, they do this early Saturday morning meeting, but um, there was so much activity going on. Then we, we just, go, I mean, yeah, it, it just took off after that. Um, you know, before you knew it, I mean, Philadelphia went from 16 meetings when I got here to Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia area, which is a huge area geographically. Uh, it went from 16 meetings to 65 in my first year. See, there's, there's, there's somewhere where I want to maybe pivot later on, which is the, we're, we're in the middle of the story, so we'll keep going, definitely, because yeah. I, I want to get the timeline right, but it, and just really interesting at some point, it may have to be part two, Pete, the way we're going, because there's just so much great stuff here. I'm happy but, to do it. Yeah, yeah, I think a part two would be great, yeah. where, um, you know, the, those who... You know, you know that group conscience recovery or group conscience literature is is now impossible just because that's what that was the thesis someone was putting forward to me today and and a lot of us you know pine for the, the time maybe through rose tinted glasses where group conscience texts group conscience recovery in its purest form yeah. what, what was was somehow able to materialize but let, listen let's let's maybe come to that but the, the where do you where, where do you go to next where we start seeing the formation of some kind of Lit world literature oh, committee well, conference. Well, that was already that was already going on before I got here. Um, okay, they they had started. Uh, you, you know the whole story of Bo. You know, I, and, and I've, you've had it on here, so I, I know yeah. you guys have that done. Uh, so so um, they had, uh, you know, they had already had the first world literature conference in uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska. No, no, that's the second. They had the first world literature conference, I think, in Wichita. Kansas uh, the previous December I think it was a previous year and they had put together guidelines for a literature committee so here we were in, in in Bucks County Pennsylvania we were already working on literature for for three months yeah. when, yeah. when we got there and um, and Bo suggested that George go to this there's a literature workshop done in uh, I think it was in South Carolina that uh, that he suggested that, that George go down to that right shortly after the east coast convention so george went down to that and he came back and uh he came back with information on how to start a, a literature committee you know local literature committee was this with a book in mind or was this maybe more ips or well, it was, no, it, was, it was definitely for the book in mind but it was for literature in general yeah and that so so he came back and we we just we just we kept doing what we we're doing but changed our name and we had some guidelines to guide us now 
Yes. You know, we already had a rhythm going with 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 creating literature, and yes. Um, yes. And, and uh, it's just that 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 kind of helped us with with structuring our activity. And you're you using know. the literature, so you're 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 capturing what's said in the meetings, and you're are you you're using it to guide these the step working meetings that you're having, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that, that was the, that was our whole motive, that was our whole point in the beginning was just yeah. to have some meetings, and we were sharing that with 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 groups all over Pennsylvania because we okay. other right. groups got wind of it and said, hey, you know, because they were in the same dilemma we've been in, yeah. and we were creating literature, so we just shared it as you know we. we I love that. You know, so, so, so meetings all over Pennsylvania were using that the, those steps and, and traditions that we had, and then, um, but we knew our experience was limited. So we we didn't have any illusions that we were writing some great stuff. We just we were just capturing what, you know, we were capturing on paper what we were talking about in meetings. That's yeah. all. And and I tried I would try to edit it into a format that you could read like like the, the twelve and twelve or whatever. But um, once we hooked up with those guys, everything changed because. Yeah we knew well for starters we knew we weren't the only ones doing this so so there was there this this activity was happening there was at least three other literature committees around the country mm -hmm. so so we started uh connecting up with them and remember this was long before internet or cell phones or any of that but 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 we stayed in regular contact i mean we were joined at the hip with marietta from that point forward um you know they started sending us uh copies of the of this this newsletter they had called the rainbow connection okay and and you know, we got fired up. We started writing articles for it, and they were publishing. Okay. You know, we, we'd get a copy in the middle, and said so we'd be all excited. I said, "Oh my God!" You know, we, we're we're in we're in this this NA newsletter, yeah. and uh, and Bo suggested to me early on that we start one in, in Philadelphia, and so I started the clean sheet. The clean and, sheet. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't realize that conversation was happening as early as it was, but um, somebody dug up this this like four page letter in cursive that I wrote to Bo in like July of 1980. And I'm already talking about that newsletter in this, in this letter. And okay. uh, it's, that's a great letter. I, 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 that's, uh, I, I was like, I was like, where did you find this? You know, but you know. Hey, can I just ask you how, uh, cause, cause you know, like um, all good addicts, we love to keep our recovery fresh and keep evolving and we love oh, getting involved in projects. How important was that? To you to keep that fire or fanning the flame, I suppose we would say, and 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 keep looking at new ways of carrying the message to the still suffering. Uh, we, you know, we didn't think about it. We were just trying to keep up with everything that was happening. You mean back then? Yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah. No, we 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 didn't have time to think think about this we stuff much. Doing it. <laughs> we were just responding to what was in front of us. Um, I mean, because we were involved at every level. Um, you know, George was the was the PI chair for Philadelphia, okay, and uh, for the Philadelphia area. And then he got he got on the committee for the second East Coast convention, so he had to step down from it. And this is like when I had like about five months clean, um, I I got had to be the 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 chair of the public information for the Philadelphia area because yeah. I'd been I'd been you know whatever George did, I was right beside him. You know, I, I just, I stuck to that guy like white on rice because I, you know, I just knew he had something that I wanted. And, um, you know, and, and so he, and George was involved with everything, you know, so. I love there's no, I love there's no clean time requirement. I mean, the clean time requirement can get in the way sometimes. I was, we were just looking at our, uh, our convention here. I think it's five years to chair it, but uh, yeah, I just yeah. wonder about these well, things. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I was on fire because you know yeah. what? What you know? What really drove me was it took me two and a half years to find you, motherfuckers, and 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 and, and you know, like I didn't want the next addict to suffer that because because I went through a lot of changes in those two and a half years. A lot of good things happened, but but I I I didn't find you know you know recovery. I didn't find clean time till I got to NA. I didn't even know clean time was a thing that I should be striving for, right? Well, this is interesting, Pete. Where did the um, I'm really interested. I don't know if you have any knowledge on this. Where the whole because what I love most about NA is it's equal status recovery and we follow principles, not clean time. We do try not to pedestalize speaker of the year, the GSR. Yeah. Yeah. Where did this, could you, this, do you have any understanding where this idea of equal status recovery came from? Equal status recovery? Yeah, we're all addicts of equal status, freely helping each other. You know, it's basically the fact that you were chair of literature committee at 19 months. You were chair of PI in Philadelphia at five months. It's, it's very inclusive to the to the newcomer. I, I I love that. 
well that that's just the way it was when i got here you know i, I it, it was like if if you were willing you know that you know that there was and there was so much because we grew so fast i don't know what it was like before that year because it had kind of been it had been in philadelphia since 1970 and it was it was only up to 16 meetings in the whole greater philadelphia area and and that where i lived in bucks county there was only three meetings but two of them were a mile from where i lived you know which was brilliant and and um you know uh, uh, george had started the first meeting in bucks county and then these other two had shot off from that but um you know back then i mean george was the only person i knew with, with over a year of clean time uh, some of the people in other parts of philadelphia had more clean time but they were older i i got this you know i really became um I, I became like one of the tribe, one of the, one of the kids, man, you know, and, and I, I maybe even had a little bit of a distrust for some of the older, older <laughs> addicts around. I, sure. I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things, but I was, uh, I was just very much like these kids. And, um, but I didn't, I didn't feel that with those guys, uh, you know, in literature in literature, because nobody, you didn't even notice people's age. We were just, we were just so um, there is such a, I, you know, I've never, I've been involved with a lot of things in my life, but I've never been involved with anything quite like that, that literature uh, work that we did, especially the first two years when we were working on the book, there was, there was something that just, there was something so much bigger than us that drove that. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, we, we would start every, every time we'd sit down to do work, you know, we'd start out invoking the, the spirit of, of those that never had the, I get choked up sometimes even just talking about it, that we, we invoked the spirit of those that never had a shot that died you know without ever having a chance and then we and then we would talk about the the addicts who hadn't found us yet and then we talk about the addicts that weren't even born yet that we were doing this for them and you know i went from in, in, a, in a matter of months i went from not being able to figure out a reason to live clean because I, I came here, I had no desire to get clean when I got to NA. It was getting, to me, getting clean was, equate, I equated that with becoming suicidal because I needed to have something to want to live. And I went from that to, be, to being part of something that was going to be around for years and was going to help you know, millions of addicts. And we, sat, we, caught, we caught that vision. That's part of the vision I caught at the first East Coast Convention was that they were, they, they, they were working on something that was going to, you know, Put this thing on the map and i knew i knew that i knew the history of aa very well because it's been in my family since 1945 so i knew what happened when they got their book and i knew uh, that if okay. people were serious and, and they were clearly serious about this book i knew that 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 na is going to be here and he's going to be a force to reckon with i i often wonder pete because i sometimes say these guys couldn't have known surely they couldn't have known what they were creating just how big it was going to be how deep it was going to be how we'd be finding all these meanings years and years decades later yeah. but maybe from what you're saying i mean just i'm looking at john lennon on the wall those guys when yeah. they were making sergeant well, pepper they they knew they were creating something I, really incredible was it the same for the basic text i could probably sum it up in one one phrase that came from george again i got so much from george um this guy, Johnny, Johnny S, and we call him Swanee, uh, many years later, uh, you know, like it was, a, I think it was at a history workshop and, and, you know, the stuff we were doing, I mean, George and I still can't figure out everything that we were involved with because it was just a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind. And, um, and, and, and this guy, Johnny said, um, said, George, where do you guys get the energy to do everything you were doing? And George just looked at him and said, Swanee, we believed we could change the world. And we did. And you did. We did. And it was, and it wasn't us. It was like we were just in the right place at the right time, and the spirit worked through us. And I, I showed up with, I had some skill sets that I'd never known how to put apply to anything worthwhile. And and you know, and I just and I just got to put them, you know, to good use. I was the, we we had the Bristol Literature Committee, and then and then Philadelphia wanted to, wanted a literature committee too. And and Bo when George Bo. I, when George talked talk to Bo about, you know, Philadelphia wants a literature committee too. He said, well, you guys are all part of the same area. Why don't they just come up and he's like, they're in the city. They don't have cars. Yeah. And in Bucks County, you needed cars to get around. And our people didn't want to go down into the city, you know, because there was a stigma about that. So, so we started the <laughs> Philadelphia literature committee 
and George chaired both, and I was his his trusty sidekick with my typewriter, you know, and um, and and they produced those two literature committees produced the chapters eight and chapter ten in the grade book. Um, chapters eight, I, chapters whatever. ten, just. I'm not reaching for a grade book, but I don't know if it's changed. What what were they specifically, Pete? We do recover and, and more will be revealed. We do recover and more will be revealed. Yeah. Do you guys on that committee produce that? We produce, uh, the, the Bristol Literature Committee produced chapter eight and Philadelphia produced chapter 10. And- um, What do you remember? Tell me, what do you remember as, as that's unfolding, as that's happening and you're in those rooms and you're- <coughs> Hitting the, hitting the keys and it's probably smoke filled, I would imagine, quite an atmosphere charged. Smoke filled. Um, well, we had, you know, we had this, we had this big old farmhouse in Ivyland, Pennsylvania that, that I had found that George, George moved in and Al R moved in with us too. So the three of us lived there together. And we, uh, that's actually where we had the Seventh World Literature Conference was in that farmhouse, but we'd had- oh, Hang on, hang on, hang on. The Seventh World Literature Conference was in the farmhouse, with, in which was the, the apartment you were sharing with, with George and others? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> there's a whole story behind that one. But, um, but before that, we had many, that's where, uh, the, that's where we, the Bristol Literature Committee would meet. Right. And, and we, did, we did a ton of literature we had weekend long uh, projects there. It was just a way of life. It was how we lived. Um, I, you know, I really considered literature my full time job, even though I, you know, I yeah. whatever jobs I could pick up, they they were to pay the rent. This was to save my life and, yeah. and the lives of others. You know, this this was a little more serious than. So than Bristol anything. was we do recover, right? You guys are doing. Bristol did we do recover. So and, what was and, what was a, what were you tasked up with that? We need some. We need literature around no, no, this. But they had uh, what the way it worked was, you know, and it um, at the Second World Literature Conference, which George went to, and a couple other, a, 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 another addict from over here went went there with them. Um, oh no, he was at that one by himself. Uh, Memphis, a couple other people went to, but uh, what they did in in uh, at, at the at uh, in Lincoln at the Second World Literature yeah. Conference was they, they that's where they um, they made the decision to go with the eight. Uh, sections of the little white book and to as, add just for, just for today and yeah. and we do recover and 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 more will be revealed and and they started sorting they had they had these trunks full of uh input that had come from everywhere over years yeah so so that's why you know i i, I get a little uncomfortable when people say you guys wrote this thing we didn't write it we just put it together because, we might, because, we yeah. wrote a bridge sentences and we you know we where, where you had to write something to make it make, make sense we did but the content was was essentially already written i think we jimmy just, often gets credited with we do recover doesn't he well Some he wrote he wrote the, politics. The, the italicized part yes the italicized part the, that's the, right the italicized parts are with the parts that came out of the little white book yes and then the rest of it so are you saying to me you okay you're bridging it you're pulling it together but i don't know if i heard you share before that multiple groups hundreds of groups involved in this group conscience process there's lines being sent back well, for... yeah okay so so i would say hundreds of groups well the and, and once we had the the grade book together there were hundreds of groups got involved with the with the with the process so, of so how many but, inputting at this point do you think addicts and uh members and and also groups hard it's hard to say how many submitted input because there we had stuff that had been submitted in the early to yeah. mid the late 70s uh they that when when uh when when they first started really getting the literature committee up and running they put a call out and it would trickle in it wasn't it didn't come flying and it would trickle in but jimmy kept it all you know and and, okay. and he, gave, he gave it all to Bo when he took over and then Bo put up some calls for literature so stuff had been coming in for years so there's no way to say how many people were involved with writing that. But you're, um, you're there I, pulling all together. What was it like when they were, did you, were you cutting and pasting? Was yeah, someone yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Um, you know, cause like George came back from Lincoln with, he had, he had the pro cut and paste process. He learned that in Lincoln. Yeah. And, um, and by the time, by, by, by the time the third world literature conference happened in Memphis, we had it we had employed the cut and paste method to those two chapters that we did because we yeah. they 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 arrived in memphis complete they yeah. that the, the world literature 
the committee did at, 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 at Memphis at the third world literature conference, they didn't have to touch chapters eight or 10. We finished them. Yeah. So, okay. so, so, um, and, and that's when like Bo, George tells a great story. You should definitely do one of these interviews with George because he's. Oh, I'm, I'm working and we're setting up. No, yeah, he's masterful. At, at, at his, his, he has some great, great stories about this. But, but I love his story about when he shows up at Memphis. You know, he's been working on this now for months, and he's been the, and he's been very involved. So, he wanted to, he like wanted, wanted the chair. He, he wanted, he wanted. Oh, he wanted to be one of the people that were doing the edits and all this stuff. And and Bo, Bo said, well, George, I need you to, uh, you know, to to chair to chair some cut and paste workshops. And George felt like he was being demoted or something, and he and he pulled Bo aside and he said, he "says Bo, he says I don't understand. I've been I've been working on this, and you know I, I'm not quite sure why why I'm being demoted." And Bo Bo looked at him like, "Are you are you kidding?" He says he says you guys are the only ones who had who finished any chapters before this. He says you know he says you happen to be the cut and paste expert in in all of NA. He says you know this process better than anyone. He says, I need you to show these other people how to do it because we have a lot of work to get done. They wanted to come out of Memphis with a book. They wanted to come out with a book. And, 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 and all they had was a lot of input. They had sorted it already. So what we got to work with and, and you know, to, on chapters eight and 10, what we got to work yeah. with was a whole bunch of input, which, yeah. which was given to me to type up. So, so I got, we had all this input that was in all different form. Thousands form. of words. Thousands. And, I, and I would type it up. And that was my, that was my, you know, like I said, I did that. I'd, I'd spend five, six hours a day typing. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, um, I, I used to kid, you know, if you want to find Pete, just look for the typewriter. Cause I was behind. <laughs> Listen it. for the noise. <laughs> yeah. And, and that stuff was like gold to me because I still, I was, I was that addict that still had a million voices in his head that I couldn't, I couldn't get to turn off. Sorry, Pete, at this point, you're not the clean time, but just to give, I, I think this is encouraging to newcomers to hear that, you know, we, you can get involved at this level. Yeah, and yeah. Stage. What, what were you at this point, clean time? Well, I mean, you know, from the time I started, uh, when, when we were in between the second and third world literature conferences, I was like eight, nine months. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was about eight, nine months clean. Cause yeah, cause that was, um, you know, I got clean in March of 1980 and this was, this was the winter of 1980. So this was, um, you know, uh, starting in September, George came back from Lincoln in September. So starting in September when I had six months clean. And, and there, was a, there was a question put to Bo, wasn't there, about newcomers' input and should, should we be, in, and, and I think I think you shared it, that if you had a day clean, you were welcome. This was the perspective that we needed to have. This was the content we needed, the well, spirit in the book. You know, they, at, at one of these literature conferences, or it might have been Memphis, I think it was, uh, you know, the, a whole bunch of addicts had shown up from this, uh, from, from a local, you know, rehab or something. And, and we would take what we thought was a finished, chapter and we'd read it read it to them and yeah. and and see what they you know and and george george asked bo he says bo why are we why are we listen why why are these people don't have any they're, they're just okay. trying to get clean yeah. and and bo bo just said george he says we're writing it for them if they don't get it we're, we've missed the mark mm. we need to make sure that they get it that they that they can understand what we're saying and you know, to, and that was the mentality. That was the you know the spirit of the whole thing. Uh, There's a guy in in the Philadelphia Literature Committee. Uh, this this guy was like, there was oh my god, there was like this. Um, there was had to be over thirty. I just crammed into this this girl Debbie's um, uh, townhouse, and you know, this one guy came up to George and said, you know, he was, he was like, I just got out of prison. He says, I can't even read and I can't write. He says, but I'd really like to be a part of this. And George put him in charge of, of, of the, the, you know, the, the, the paste and the scissors and the, you know, and, 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 and help, you know, he was, he became the, the, the resource guy, you know. And is this on, is this on those chapters that we're talking about eight and 10? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he couldn't read, he couldn't write it. Oh, that is so inspiring. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Every, everyone had a role. Just like yeah. at the Fifth World Literature Conference in, in Warren, Ohio, same deal. A guy couldn't read or write, and, and he asked, uh, I think it was Jim M. was chairing that, that, that conference, Jim Miller, and he asked him what he could do. Well, he, he went up to him and said, hey, I can't read and I can't write. He says, but I can cook. He says, and you guys are going to be here. It looks like you guys are going to be here for a while. He says, 
he says if, if if you guys take up a you know if you kind of take up a collection uh, for food i'll go i'll go shop and cook for you guys all week and man that guy and that's what he did and and so he was part of he was part of this book the issue about that you often hear is addicts sold their blood to make this book. Do, do, do you know about it? We're, I know that story thing. well. My friend Jim 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 Nichols, uh, in, from Nebraska. Um, Jim, they were sitting around. They were, they were, they were playing in the Second World Literature Conference. They were hosting it, right? Jim was chairing that conference, and they were trying to get this flyer out as far and wide as they could get it. So they wanted to send it to every group in NA. And they got, you know, they got hold of the world directory or whatever. And there was 600 meetings at that time. And, and they didn't have, you know, no, we didn't have money for it. Nobody, there was no money. So you had to figure it out, you had to be resourceful. And they were sitting around, you know, he had six of his sponsees sitting around in his kitchen. And back then, I guess you could get a roll of stamps for, um, uh, to, you could get a hundred stamps for whatever it was, but, but they could get enough money if they went and sold their plasma you know somebody said hey you know when i was in, in, and this is my story too i i sold my my blood when i was you know at the end of my using them um you know, i said what well, well, let's go down a blood bank and sell our plasma you know and so Those so they would have known that except addicts to go and sell who would have <laughs> from they, got using. A, they got enough they got enough postage to, to mail that fire to every meeting in the world and um you know and and so everybody knew about it there wasn't that, fl that flyer was advertising what exactly the second world literature conference ah, the second world literature conference there's been a lot of that story has been beat to death it's yeah, they've it's, people have said they used they sold their blood to send the great book out they didn't sell their blood to send the great book out but they did sell their blood to get that fire on and um you know jim 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 is a very important figure in my recovery yes, yes. You know, he, okay he, yeah because uh, i was when i was working on the na history which that was my that was my job when I became the, the vice chair of World Lit was they wanted me to work on the history. And okay. that's when I started finding out things about, you know, NA before 1953 and all that. So had the, had the, had the basic text, had all the work on the gray form, as, as we now call it, had that been done when you were 19 months and became vice chair of the World Lit? Oh, the, the approval form was done. We had we we already sent the gray, gray book had gone out. It, 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 we'd, had, we'd had three world literature conferences in between to, to put all the input fr from the gray book into what became the approval form. And yeah. it was uh, the approval form came out of Miami, which is the Sixth World Literature Conference at the end of 81. 81 yeah. And it was January of 1982 when we had the Seventh World Literature Conference and that was to put the stories in the, in the, the basic thing. Ah, we called yeah. that the Stories Conference. We had, um, you know, our friend Teresa, you know, called me up and says, hey, Pete, guess where the Seventh World Literature Conference is gonna be? I'm like, I have no idea. She goes, your house i'm like what and no, was it, what? Was it, oh i'm sorry go oh, sorry interrupt. i was like we we just had a new roommate who moved in this guy with a bunch of time, clean time and everything but he wasn't into all this 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 the the, the you know he he did his bit when he was getting clean and and i was like oh my god jerry's gonna flip out he, he moved out for the weekend because we <laughs> used his room we used him, his room to install the copiers and everything so what but, was happening there at that at that call, that particular conference in your apartment with your flatmates, um, and you've got bodies crammed in there? What what was the pro? What was the task for that weekend? Oh, uh, to to to, uh, to um, work on all the stories Story. for the back of the, the first edition. <laughs> Do you think it's a much overlooked we aspect? Phone, well, we made phone calls to Australia, Japan, Hawaii, uh, England. We talked to we talked to a fellow in England. Yeah. Um, and, and, um, you know, the, 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 the guy from Japan was interesting because he, he didn't speak a word of English and none, none of us knew, knew Japanese, but, yes. um, they, he, he found somebody that could interpret. And so the stories came through an interview process, like much like, what no, no, a lot of them had been submitted. They've been submitted. Right. Okay. You know, we, 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 it's just, we, we, had, we put together, we, we put together, a, a we had a chart. Of, of what we, we wanted the, the stories to be as representative as possible yeah. of, of, of addicts. So, so we, we said, we, okay, we have, we, we need, we need, we need some young, young people, you know, so, so somebody, somebody said, asked George to write his story up. Uh, Teresa got her, her story was in there. Um, and, yeah. you know, we needed, we needed, we needed people. We tried to get people, we tried to have as diverse a, a collection of stories as we could, 
So we also wanted, to, it was important to have stories from other countries, you know, because we wanted, you know, so, so yeah. somebody heard about the Japanese attic, somebody heard about uh, somebody in Australia and, uh, and, you know, um, we got, uh, but we had to call all these places also to get releases because we had to get releases for the stories as yeah. well. So the stories were never, I mean, it's technical, but the, 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 we've got the approval form of the great and then going into the first, you're, you guys are working on the stories for the first edition, right? Yeah, because we were trying to get it all together. The reason we had to meet in January was because the World Service Conference was going to be, what was it, April or May? And we wanted to, we wanted to get a, we had, a, there, were, there were two approval forms. One was the, the book itself and the other was the stories. Yeah, and so so at, coming out of that conference, and I I I think I pretty much wrote the letter that that went out to the fellowship from that conference, mm -hmm. that um, we 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 asked everyone to review the stories and to select. I think we sent fifty stories out, and we asked them to yeah. to, to rank them, you know, to select their you know select which stories they that they wanted to go in because I think we only included maybe thirty eight. I think in the first edition, okay. but um, then we also, that was uh, the letter that, that I also included the part about requesting input on their history of, 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 their, of everyone's there. We wanted the history, we wanted the history to be representative of, of everywhere, not just California, you know, and, and, yeah. and so, um, you know, because we, everybody knew that history. We wanted to, the history of how it came up. How did it get started in Philadelphia in 1970 and Atlanta in, in the early 70s? Um, and then and it was in that process that we learned about NA in New York City in the 40s, you know, and we learned about Lexington, learned about the farm in Lexington. And I think we could do a whole separate thing with your wealth of knowledge around the history. And that was your specific. It sounds like you were trying to incorporate what you were learning about the history in the stories and and getting some of that information out, which I think is is, is an amazing idea. I think, um, listen, we've been going for an hour yeah. pretty much. I think we go to, you, are you, can you commit to, are you willing for part two? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and <laughs> if we need to do, because it, it, it's, I think it's really important to, to, you know, to get the, you know, to get these um, um, oral, oral histories. Yeah, they're uh, great. Yeah. Doing. And, yeah. Because yeah, like one thing to read about it, but to be able to, you know, hear somebody who was, who was there talk about it. Mm. It's like everything else. Er, er, <laughs> I might have been in the same the same exact place as somebody else, and my story is going to be different because I saw it from my perspective. You know, we we, we do try and get the facts as, as close to accurate as we can. Sure, know? and that's really important. I think that's and that's that's why I appreciate you so much. Maybe just a final question, Pete, before we close this one, and then sure. we'll take it offline and we'll arrange. Just okay. going back to that this body of work, which is group conscience, right? Yes. But being part of that, being part of something so big and so important and so life-changing for millions of addicts, when did that first kind of hit you? Or have you had any kind of spiritual experiences, say, over the years where you've been thanked or an addict's come up to you? And is there anything that sticks out? Oh, uh, well, you know, so I'll tell you, just from my experience, I got, I got, to benefit from a, a tremendous spiritual experience that was happening all around me. And I got to live off the fumes of that and be, be right in the middle of it and be part of it. But when I was coming up on four years clean and I'd been, I'd been he heavily involved in literature the whole time. Um, I, I think at, at that point I was the secretary of the world literature committee or something. And, um, and, 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 it, and that's when I first, I had a surrender that I wasn't expecting that, um, that I realized that, you know, you can only live on the fumes for so long. I hadn't had the vital spiritual experience that you have as a result of working these 12 steps. Ah, interesting. So you've been involved in the book, but you, ha yeah, you haven't had time to... No, I hadn't. I had a sponsor who took me through the first five, but that's all he had experience with. Wow. And, and after that, I couldn't find anybody that could take me through. Then th Nobody knew how to take another addict through the steps, you know? and um, help you to have that experience. But I, I was fortunate to find a group right at four years clean that, um, that had a lot of experience doing that. And, um, and, and I got to have that experience and, um, and there's a huge difference. They call it, Greg P coined the phrase service-based recovery. Yeah. Service-based recovery is, that, that's just like, you, you, 
you know, it was a necessity at the time. These are the fumes that you're talking about. Yeah, it was a yeah. necessity at the time because the work had to get done. The, the, the timing was critical. Yeah. And the overall scheme of things, addiction was fucking, was, was going fucking crazy in the 80s. That's yeah. when, that's when crack came, came along. That's when so many things went just like addiction just went off the charts in the 80s. And, and, and so the growth of NA reflected that. We were able to be here. We were able to be positioned with a book. And with a structure, then I don't even know that the structure was that important, but the book was, and 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 you know, we 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 had that we had a lot of people work tirelessly to legitimize us, to 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 get people to refer refer people to us, you know, to uh you know to to be recognized as as a as a place where people addicts can actually recover, mm-hmm. and um you know all of that happened, and like we didn't have time for all of us to to go through the 12 steps first we didn't have we didn't have the luxury that's why i look i look today i'm like i i I say you got you got lots of addicts around you that have been through the 12 steps get that experience but but in the meantime serve you know certain you know one of the brilliant things about the uh, i think about this this the covid uh and everything that's happened as a result Mm -hmm. is a lot more addicts have been able to get involved who wouldn't have otherwise a million percent a million yeah and yeah. and that's beautiful i watched that i was part of i was part of this home group uh q a seattle for my first for the first two years of covid yeah and i gotta tell you i know a lot of addicts are we call it screen clean they got screen clean they got sponsors i'm sponsoring addicts in six different countries yeah. through through this medium and and oh. you know Pete, Pete, I got I got clean during uh, I got clean right at the beginning of uh, lockdown, and today I am. I'm just looking at my counter. Nine hundred ninety-three days clean today. Oh, so this has all happened during this this process, right. and and it, yeah, it's, yeah. I feel like it's maybe okay. It's maybe not on the same level as the what you guys did, but the evolution maybe oh. has has been incredible this through has been this historical. platform. This, these last few years have been a, a historical thing uh you know something we're going to look back on years from now and say that's when a lot of things changed for the better i think for the bit for the better right listen i'm going to put a, let's put a pin in it i'm really interested in picking up next time on this idea of um that maybe the spiritual experience or the big learning for you was that you've you, you with others have created this amazing spiritual text and now you have it and you can use it yourself yeah. to go through the process of, yeah. of the steps and the traditions. I, I love that. And I want to hear more about that, Pete. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty good story. So listen, for everyone that's watching, and I know a lot of the guys who feed back and say love these things, I just want to thank you on behalf of everyone. And we, we owe you a, an enormous debt of gratitude. And it's a personal privilege for me to sit here in front of you today, well, Pete, and, and hear this firsthand. Well, I got to tell you, what you're doing right now is just as important, because because we 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 need to sustain this this you know the the concept of of, of recovery, you know, of the the pure concept of recovery through the twelve steps and twelve traditions, and and I'm just about that. I I don't I don't know about everything else that's going on. I focus on that. Yeah. You know, that's what my sponsor got me to you know convince me to fo- focus on twelve step recovery, uh, traditions, and let the rest of the, let let everything else let the chips fall where they will. You know, I don't have control over anything else, but, but, um, the, and I don't even have control over that. I just have, I have a relationship with a higher power that allows me to, to, to allows my spirit to run free. You know, yeah. I, uh, to me, adventure is a rec- I mean, recovery is an adventure. It's an uncharted venture. It's, it's like every day there's something new, you know, and it gets renewed every day. And this, these steps allow us to do that, you know, so. Uh, that, that's beautiful, Pete. Um, okay, we will stop it there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pete.